Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a 5-color Meeting of the 5 deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring the 8-mana Mythic Rare Sorcery that exiles the top 10 cards of our library, and then we may cast spells with exactly 3 colors from among them this turn, adding 2 of each color to our mana pool that we can only spend to cast spells with exactly 3 colors. It's a pretty big restriction, but that simply means we have to play all 3 color spells in our deck, so outside of our Curious Briefcase, every spell is a 3 color card we can hit with Meeting of the Five, making this an all Streets of New Capenna deck outside of our lands in the mana base. So starting out at 2 mana, full play set of Briefcase, an artifact treasure so we can sacrifice it to add 1 mana of any color, makes a 1-1 citizen when it enters and can pay 1 of each color, tap and sacrifice it to draw 3 cards, so it can be a nice source of card advantage in the more grindy matchups. Then at 3 mana we mostly have removal spells, with 3 copies of Voidrend, which is uncountable to destroy target a non-land permanent. Riveteer's Charm can make the opponent sacrifice their most expensive creature or planeswalker, can also use it for card advantage or to exile the opponent's graveyard. Incandescent Aria deals 3 damage to each non-token creature, so this is our primary sweeper in the deck. We've got 2 copies of Broker's Charm, can help us fight one of our creatures with an opposing creature, can destroy enchantments or often just draw 2 cards. And then Endless Detour, also quite flexible as a pseudo counterspell that can bounce stuff that's already in play. And then we also have two copies of Nimble Larcenist, a 2-1 flyer that when it enters takes a look at the opponent's hand to exile an artifact, instant or sorcery, so it shines against some more controlling decks. Then at 4 mana we have most of our win conditions, with the full play set of Fleetfoot Dancer, a 4-4 with Trample, a Lifelink and Haste, so it can pad our life total against some more aggressive decks. We've got one Zia Taurus Envoy, a 5-4 Trampler that can provide card advantage if it connects with the opponent, can also be blitzed for 5 mana to give it haste. And then we've got the Glamour Thief, a 2-4 with haste, can pay 1 mana tap it to add blue-black-red to our mana pool that we can only spend to cast instant and or sorcery spells, so that can help us ramp into our meeting of the 5 ahead of schedule, which is very important. And when the Glamour Thief dies we can return an instant or sorcery from our graveyard to our hand, so we can even get back our meeting in the late game. Then at 5 mana we've got more sweepers with Hostile Takeover, and then Evelyn, the Covetous, can also provide card advantage by letting us cast spells off the top of each player's library, and also synergizes with the Glamour Thief as another vampire to refresh those collection counters. And then we've got our four meetings as the big curve topper in the deck. And then our mana base consists of two of each of the trial lands, which are very important for mana fixing. We've got one of each pathway as it comes into play untapped, and then also one of each of the enemy colored dual lands from Crimson Vow and then one basic forest in case of Field of Ruin. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and what do we think of this opener? It's quite land light, um, but we do have a briefcase at least. Mana could be better, but I'll try it. Just hoping to string together a few land drops. Okay, that's good. So we're on track to play a Larcenus, potentially. Although that's going to make it trickier to play our Fleetfoot Dancer afterwards. Opponent's black-green, playing some Maroons, so not sure what to make of it. But wouldn't mind having a look with Larcenus. And we can take a Culling Ritual or Hagra Mauling. Ritual deals with Briefcase. Whereas Mauling is a better answer to like a Fleetfoot Dancer. I guess Mauling is also a land, so take that instead. And then I'll feel better about maybe using the Briefcase before they can blow it up. Although there's still a Binding of course that can come down as well. Their opponent with another Rune of Might incoming. I guess a Culling Ritual also generates mana from Rune of Might. So with this mana I cannot really cast Fleetfoot Dancer. Next turn we're probably gonna see Culling Ritual into maybe a Skew Swarm. 
I guess we'll attack still and then play a tap land if they don't calling ritual for some reason. I can maybe sacrifice my briefcase to draw. Alright, Putin plays a binding instead. Goes after Larsenus, so that's good for us. And then we should have the mana to sacrifice a briefcase. Which I think is better than playing any of my four drops or even Evelyn. Since we really want to just hit our land drops for a meeting of the five to take over. So there's Calling Ritual and Response will draw. Opponent still has a bit of mana here. For a Skeet Swarm. And luckily we can deal with it through Aria before it generates any tokens that wouldn't die to it. So let's see if I Aria. Can I still keep up Riveteer's Charm somehow? Yeah, there's the blue mana that's going to make that impossible. Alright, let's just uh, Arya then. Probably one more red. Renan 7. We can maybe answer with Riveteer's Charm, although the token will stay around. We're getting close to casting our meeting, can do so next turn. So for now, a Riveteer's Charm, deal with Renan 7. And then I can play a Fleetfoot Dancer on defense. Another Renan 7. Makes another tree folk. And a rune of mine to give a trample. Okay, this meeting of the five needs to find some good removal. As we take nine. And uh, yeah, let's go for it. Void rent's not bad, hostile takeover. Okay, so now we're talking. We have options. So Takeover can shrink down one of their creatures. Voidrend can deal with the other. A thing that beats going for Glamour Thief or another Dancer. Given my hand. Alright, so the board is clear, and we still have some good leftovers in hand. Run and seven, number three. Opponent's looking at their graveyard for a recovery, getting back run and seven. Another void rent. So could void rent the token, blitz envoy, and uh, maybe find something else juicy. Sure. This can finish off their Planeswalker, I guess. So they cannot plus to find more lands first. And Envoy just finds a land. And draws another card. Hoping for another meeting. Can play Evelyn, see what's on top, maybe find another removal spell. There's another meeting, perfect. And then probably find to play my basic land first, have more dual lands to cast whatever I exile. Because meeting does get better the more lands we have, as we'll be able to cast more spells with it. And we found some goodies. So detour can bounce the token. 
and then let's see if we have enough for Dancer plus Glamour Thief. I think we might be able to. They both have haste. And attack for exactly 10. Awesome. So a nice grindy game against Black Green. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and this hand is a little sketchy. Only two lands, do have a briefcase, a river tears charm can help me hit my land drops. Maybe it's not so bad actually, as we'll be able to play Incandescent Aria as a catch-up mechanism so we don't get overrun by an aggro deck, and then hopefully get to the late game with double meeting. Really hoping for a land here, as our opponent plays an Innkeeper. Perfect. So probably no need for Incandescent Aria. So we'll play Briefcase since we cannot revert Tears Charm with this mana. If I went with green, I could have cast Aria, but I'm going for blue since we have double green already. So yeah, sequencing our lands in this deck, very tricky. Opponent with a Story Seeker, so kind of implies a life gain deck. So if I play that on red, I can Incandescent Aria. That seems reasonable. Or we can just go for Glamour Thief, keep it on defense. And maybe wait for them to play like a Moon Dancer, pick up a counter, and then we can still kill it. It's gonna be a Core Salbrant instead. Broker's Charm. Can we cast that one? We can. To draw. And I wouldn't mind drawing. Could also potentially use Glamour Thief. To make the blue mana, and then we can still maybe Riveteer's Charm. Don't think that's going to be necessary, let's just draw two. Hit my land and pass. And I could still Riveteer's Charm at instant speed using Glamour Thief. Sigarda Splendor, okay, kind of sad I got rid of my Disenchant now. So that happens. Could still Riveteer's Charm for card advantage, or could get rid of the Celebrants. And then Arya cleans up the rest, and we can attack for a little bit of damage. That's also reasonable. Yeah, let's just clear the board. And attack. I'm gonna hang on to my briefcase over playing Larcenist. Cleric class can eventually get back one of their creatures as well. Times two. Okay. Well, I guess we could even cast Meeting of the Five. Thanks to Glamour Thief and our briefcase. Is that worth it? It might be. Alternative would be... I guess we could, like, Riveteer's Charm using Thief, see what we hit. Um, don't really want to Blitz Envoy, sacking the briefcase, so we'd just be playing it for 4 mana, which is still fine. Although, let's go big with meeting. Don't think I need briefcase for card draw with these cards in hand. And then... Well, I guess we just play Double Glamour Thief. And then we can get back our meeting, or maybe Broker's Charm as well. So I wouldn't be able to tap this for mana, just play another Glamour Thief. Have to play it now since the mana goes away. And get back meeting. So... Our meeting didn't really accomplish a whole lot. 
I guess we just drew a broker's charm and lost a briefcase. Was hoping for Fleetfoot Dancers instead. Opponent meets in a tavern, finding a lot of angels and a moon dancer as well. So that's quite scary. Although we can still deal with the moon dancer while it's small. So what are we thinking? Could go for another meeting. Yeah, why not? Finding Fleetfoot Dancer. Broker's Charm can maybe deal with Splendor. Avalon's also tempting. Takeover deals with Moon Dancer. Although I'm not too concerned about Moon Dancer just yet. So maybe I want uh, extra creatures in play. How much of a threat is Splendor? Because if we deal with Splendor, then they're also not gaining any life to trigger Moon Dancer right away. So maybe we should start there. And then Fleetfoot Dancer versus Evelyn. Guess we've already played a fair share of vampires, so we're not going to trigger Evelyn any additional times. So let's go for Dancer instead then. And attack. Alright, got another meeting in hand. Opponent's probably going to play Harbinger. Unless they want to maybe play Righteous Valkyrie first to trigger Harbinger the turn they play it to make an angel. It's going to be a Book of Exalted Deeds. And an Inscription of Abundance gaining life. Growing Moon Dancer. And then Book makes an angel. Okay. Well, I guess the five are going to meet once again. That seems okay. We know there's nothing we can take with Larsenists. Sure, let's go for it. Even have a spare mana to maybe cast an extra spell. Hostile Takeover looking good now. And... Uh, can grow my token so it doesn't die. Play another Fleetfoot Dancer as well. Seems like a... Uh, Good compromise here. So... Can hit them for 12. And then River Tears Charm can deal with whatever angel they play next. Time for Harbinger. Can sacrifice that. And another dancer for good measure. Alright, sweet. So beat a green white life gain deck onto the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Hands seems reasonable. With an Aria as our sweeper, Void Ren to maybe catch something larger. And I guess Monoret certainly wants access to Aria. Fleetfoot Dancer also, nice follow up. Oni Cold Anvil, so Red Black Sacrifice. The Anvil, something we might want to Void Rend. Since Ariel's not the best at dealing with its tokens. Apprentice we can kill. Probably gonna sacrifice it themselves. Put a count from battery. And another apprentice. Well, if I go for Aria, we kill battery and apprentice, which isn't too bad. Leave them with a 2-2 token. Or I can try and go after 
the anvil first, but then if they reconfigure the battery, I might no longer be able to kill it. Yeah, I think going for Arya is reasonable. Just double checking our mana situation here. And then next turn we could just go for Fleetfoot Dancer and ignore Anvil. Opponent sacking Synthesizer. Making a 2 2 token. Also would not have died to Arya. So definitely has its limitations. But now the coast seems clear for Fleetfoot Dancer to attack. And, uh. I think play this on blue. And then hope to pick up an untap land for hostile takeover. If not, we can play a Glamour Thief. Opponent's probably playing Voltage Surge as removal, which could deal with a Dancer. Life of Toshiro pumps one of their tokens. So they can attack, sacrifice a 1-1 one -one to trigger Anvil. Gonna be a Blade of the Oni instead. Could be quite scary if reconfigured. Alright, so Hostile Takeover would be awesome, but we won't be able to play just yet. I guess I'm attacking since we're not guaranteed to be able to block a Menace creature here. And then I think Glamour Thief makes sense, can play defense, and then also helps us cast Takeover ahead of schedule. Opponent takes four, we gain four. So with an untapped land we could cast our meeting already, but just going for takeover would be pretty decent, and then let's see, I guess 5, 6, 7 could also leave enough mana for a briefcase if we use the Glamour Thief's ability. Opponent reconfigures blade onto a token, making it an 8-8 eight eight menace. That works. So Void Rend, also an appealing option. Okay, we found a land. So, going for meeting seems reasonable. And hope we don't break off too hard. Alright, we definitely did not. So, where do we want to start? Avoid Rend's Blade. Can play Fleetfoot Dancer. And then I think we can even Riveteer's Charm, if I'm not mistaken. Let's start here. Kill Blade. Play Dancer, and yeah, we can also Riveteer's Charm. And might as well make them a sacrifice here. Just gets rid of a 1 1. Getting rid of their graveyard doesn't seem much better. And not gonna have the mana to use the second mode. And hit for 8. And gain 8. And yeah, I think we may have uh, swung this game around. Thanks to Glamour Thief generating extra mana. And our opponent concedes. Yeah, next turn hostile takeover. Probably the final nail in the coffin. Awesome. Alright, we're on the play, and my hand is not great, but probably still a keep. We can cast our Endless Detour on three, giving us a little bit of early interaction. And then, if we find red mana, maybe Riveteer's Charm helps us hit more lands as well. There's our red mana, and uh, I think I should still play towards Endless Detour, since better to play Riveteer's Charm later in the game. So our opponent's also playing some sort of 5-color deck, so it could be the Mirror Match, in which case I'm not in a hurry to keep up Endless Detour. 
curious to see what sort of build our opponent brings to the table. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. So not fully committed to the three color theme. Could detour the token. Definitely don't want it to connect and make treasure for fixing. So detour versus Riveteer's Charm. We did hit a few line drops in the meantime. So could also charm just to kill the Shaman. Which seems reasonable. And then keep Endless Detour to maybe counter a meeting of the five. And then Evelyn should be great in a mirror match. Okay, never mind, our opponent's a reanimator deck. Co-mine Titan of Industry discarded. Well, now I'm regretting getting rid of Riveteer's Charm, which could have exiled their graveyard. Still have Detour to bounce whatever they reanimate. So for now, we'll just keep up Evelyn. Or I could play Glamour Thief. So I can maybe play Meeting next turn. Although then our opponent gets to maybe reanimate Titan or Koma. Yeah, let's just play it safe. And then if they don't reanimate, we can still play Evelyn. Opponent's going through the graveyard. And goes for a Titan of Industry. So I probably want to just bounce a Titan once they reanimate it. Does mean they'll have a leftover 4-4. But then I can also potentially use Evelyn to exile the Titan once it's back on top. Yeah. Because if I just, you know, bounce the Rebirth, they can replay it next turn. So that doesn't really solve our problem. So it goes for shield counter and 4-4 as expected. And we can bounce Titan. Also would have been pretty scary with a reflection of Kiki Jiki in play. So we'll see if they put it on top or bottom. Puts it on top. So that's an incentive to main phase Evelyn so they don't draw it. And we hit a land, perfect. Then Glamour Thief triggers Evelyn once again as well. And with a land I could just play my own Titan. Although it looks like they can reanimate once again here. Bringing back Koma this time. Nope, opponent just copies the 4-4 Rhino. Yeah, I think we block since don't really want to take 8. But they could finish off Evelyn, maybe. Yeah, Cathartic Pyre was expected. Right, so no Titan for us. That's alright. So now, take over to clear the board. Or Glamour Thief to set up meeting of the five. Although with an untapped land I can just play meeting next turn regardless. And actually if I play Glamour Thief, yeah I guess we're still one mana short of also playing takeover with the ability. I think going for Glamour Thief is fine. There's already some cards to get back in case they kill it. And also lets me play briefcase. So that way I can play meeting even if they kill Glamour Thief. And I don't think we're gonna die to our opponent untapping with Reflection one turn. And then I might as well attack since I'm not planning to block and our opponent's probably using Reflection anyway. Okay. Could chum block with our token. Or we can keep it around and then grow it with Hostile Takeover. Although most likely going to fire off meeting. So jumping to preserve our life total seems reasonable too. So time for Koma. 
Reanimate it with Rebirth. Nope, opponent goes for Lord Xander. So, discard Takeover, keep meeting. And we'll jump. Although, if I keep the token and Lord Xander dies, I could just sacrifice the citizen, potentially, instead of having to sack Briefcase or Glamour Thief. So we'll untap. Time for meeting. And we should be able to find removal here. We sure did. So Void Rent, Lord Xander, Sacrifice, Citizen. And then we still have a couple other plays available. So, can Void Rent's Reflection, or we can Broker's Charm draw to. Still have, I guess, an extra land available to maybe help cast whatever we need. So if I do this... Yeah, I guess we don't have enough blue mana, that's kind of the problem. I guess we can Incandescent Aria and then still cast something, and I think draw to beats. Killing the 4-4. And we can hit our land drop too. And then I could also sacrifice Briefcase to Void Rends. Doesn't seem necessary. Okay. Dox roll the Corrosive, dies to Riveteer's Charm. And the Hostile Takeover, also a pretty clean solution. So... I guess we can do both if we want to deal with both creatures. What if I tap this for mana, play another Glamour Thief? Does that leave enough mana to play another Meeting of the Five? That's maybe greedy. We can just draw with a Briefcase and play Riveteer's Charm. That seems good enough. And then Glamour Thief could chum block, get back meeting of the five as well. Riveteer's Charm to Exile Graveyard could have been a nice one to keep up. If we maybe went for Takeover and then hang on to Riveteer's Charm. Although at this point our opponent can just hard cast whatever large creatures they have left. So, yeah, pass and draw with briefcase, or I could draw now. And then I think the plan is to chum block. Since we can still potentially hit our land drop here. Alright, I've got another meeting in hand. So, don't hate my spots. Could take another 4 damage. And keep our Glamour Thief around. Haven't hit any Fleetfoot Dancers yet to gain a bit of life back. Opponent with a Seize the Spoils discarding Jingitaxius. Actually would have been quite effective against us, but maybe lacking the mana to cast it. Olivia, just gonna reanimate it perhaps. So are we just dead now? If they bring back Toxtrel, I can chump and go to one. Opponent reanimates Jingitaxius instead. So that's gonna counter my meeting if I try and cast it. So we have to kind of switch game plan now. Still have to jump and go to one. And I guess if I get Void Rends back, that's uncounterable, so it gets around Jingitaxius, and then I can kill Olivia, which also deals with Jin. I guess that's fine. And then I can still deal with the Rhino token in a multitude of ways. And the safest is probably just to take over. If I play Glamour Thief, 
I can still play takeover, perhaps. Three, four, no, I would be one mana short. So that seems a little risky. So yeah, let's just take over here. And hope our opponent doesn't have another Olivia. Or a reanimation spell would kill us too. Thelemachus Lorehold, okay, fair enough. 5-5, five, five, Flying Vigilance Haste. Cast a free return upon the tide, getting Lord Xander. And yeah, that's gonna kill us here. GG, close game against the reanimator deck. Nice back and forth. Wasn't able to cast as many meetings as I would have liked. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is pretty reasonable. Some tri lands to start out. Briefcase for fixing as well. Although I should be able to cast most of our spells, especially once we find black mana. Double Fleetfoot Dancer. Up against what could be a white aggro deck, red white. Festival Crasher, okay, so more of a Magecraft style of deck. So probably gonna end up drawing two with Broker's Charm to potentially cast our Dancer next turn. But probably gonna take a beating here. Reckless Impulse. Finds a Showdown, which they can play next turn. For now, take three. And they've got a Lumomancer as well. At least we can play Fleetfoot Dancer or Incandescent Aria, which is probably the safer play here. And then they can play Showdown to refuel while we hit them with a Fleetfoot Dancer. And we've got quite a few in hand. So next turn, they can play a land. They've got a bunch of combo tricks in exile, which aren't too helpful. Boon of Safety puts a shield counter on Light Scribe to protect it. We can remove the shield counter with Aria, even if. It doesn't kill the Light Scribe, to then maybe kill it some other way. And then critical hit just to get a plus one counter from Showdown. I could just cast another Incandescent Aria, and then attack. And I'm okay with the trade. And then next turn, we can maybe finish off the Light Scribe using Broker's Charm, although likely that it's going to have more counters from Showdown. Could just play another Dancer attack with both. Gain some life in the process. I guess I don't hate double Dancer attack for 8. And then that's one way of getting rid of a shield counter as well. Bone is just gonna take it, fair enough. So they really want to keep that Light Scribe. Could always hit a Riveteer's Charm or Endless Detour as clean solutions that get around a shield counter. Although we're still missing black mana. Opponent foretells what could be maybe a Chaos Onslaught. To give a double strike. Okay. So if I just go for another Dancer and they don't have instant speed removal, they would just be dead, even if they have a combo trick here. That seems fine to me. Triple Dancer. Finally found our black mana too. Aha, uh -huh, they've got an Iganjo, so if they also have Kaios Onslaught, they survive in pretty good shape. And yep, there it is. Okay, we get to keep playing, which I don't mind. Opponent's still at 4. 
And next turn we should be able to cast a few more spells. At 33, not in immediate danger of dying. Another Void Rend. So let's say we play Briefcase and then just pass with Void Rend up. Or I could Incandescent Aria to deal with a Shield Counter and then next turn Void Rend. Alternatively, could also just draw with Broker's Charm, ignore Light Scribe, and then try and cast a Meeting to go over the top and hit our land drops. Kind of like that idea. Especially if they have more shield counters in hand to protect the Light Scribe. There's no point in me spending a bunch of resources trying to get rid of it. And now Riveteer's Charm, a much cleaner solution that can ignore all shield counters, as we mentioned. Anger to draw. Don't think the Light Scribe's attacking. Well, never mind. Just blocking with a citizen also gets rid of the shield counter. Put a Chaos Onslaught with double strike now prevents that from happening. And our opponent's going off here. Double double strike. But thankfully we had a little bit of life to work with. And our opponent concedes before we have to reveal the Riveteer's Charm. Okay. So yeah, we got to see our five color meeting deck in action. And it's certainly far from perfect. I would not recommend playing this in any competitive setting because you're quickly going to regret it after facing some aggressive decks, especially if they're backed up by some disruption. Like out of the mono white deck, cards like Thalia, cards like Elite Spellbinder will uh, quickly disrupt your curve, especially if you're on the draw, having to work with all these tap lands, or deck can be incredibly slow out of the gates. Also not the best when facing counter spells, which can easily counter or big payoff card. So definitely not a competitive deck, but in a casual setting, it's definitely a fun time, especially if you just opened a bunch of packs from Streets of New Capenna and happen to have most of the cards in the deck already. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.